get through this. Um, we got a fun planned hour ahead of us, 45 minutes on uh, building complex reporting to advanced formatting using a ma a master detail reporting concepts and all kinds of neat bells and whistles. There's a lot of people signed up for this. I thank you under all the situations going on in the world right now. Uh, we certainly got a lot going on. Um, you took the time, probably easier for many of you because you're working at, at home and, and hooked into your office and probably less interruptions, not getting pulled out of a meeting or any of that kind of stuff. Hopefully it's part of that as well. Uh, but I appreciate you coming out. Um, I've got my contact information. You will be entitled to a copy of the handout after the presentations are completed. You can email me or you'll be getting it through Accelerate. Special thanks to Accelerate for putting it all together. Uh, great, great turnout for this. One of the largest webinars that I've ever done. A lot of good interest. We'll be looking three or four weeks out for another one. And we'll throw out some information on that later on for you as well, what you might like to see. So let's get out there right now and let's talk about building master detail reports. It's an incredible feature. It's an amazing feature of the product. Probably one of the most underutilized features of the product. It opens up your eyes to a lot of things. We live in a world of business intelligence where we have two products or two worlds. We have a reporting piece making up roughly 70% or 75, 25 to 30%. The visualization world with Tableau and Power BI and other products, they complement, they don't compete. People uh, will disagree, but there are things that are well suited for Tableau or Power BI. There are a lot of things that are suitable in, re in the Webby reporting tool. We're a reporting tool with some very nice basic dashboarding functionality and, and visualization-like functionality as well. But let's talk a little bit and show you some really cool things that you can do with, with uh, Webby. And I'm, gonna, I'm running in 4.2 Service Pack 7. Those of you that have moved to 4.2, make sure you get some type of update training, whether it's a two-day delta or consolidated of, of some sort. There are so many new features, probably in the area of 100, even in late 4.1, and you're not gonna be able to take advantage of those because you don't know about them. And some of those you'll see with me working today, uh, some of the highlights and stuff is, is part of that as well. So let's go out to Webby. Here's your standard login screen, home, documents tab that we're all used to. Um, the example I'm gonna do, I've actually built it as well, so you can see the finished product come in later on. So log up, we'll get into Webby. We're coming in through the home button, so we're gonna create a new document. You're all familiar with the infamous blue-gray screen to nowhere. Well, here it is. We hit the new button. And notice the expanded window with 4.2 SP7 even further. I've got text now available, Excel, Universe. I've got free and SQL. The uh, HANA ones you can eliminate through the admin console and VEX as well if you don't want to see those, as well as a no data source document. We'll stick with Universe, though I could have done it with Excel or text or anything else. Let's take our eFashion Universe here. We have multiple flavors of it, depending on customer uh, situations. Here's the uh, query panel screen. Uh, what I don't have open on the bottom is the preview window, data preview on the bottom. And you noticed on the top, I'm clicking on a little button that opens and closes it. A 4.2 enhancement is once I close it, it stays closed until I choose to open it up at a later point in time. All right, I don't need that preview window very much, so I closed it. I could do the same for query filters as well. Notice we're in HTML, a little different look and feel. Make sure when you move to 4.2, SP3 and above, it's got to be a service pack 3 and above. You get 99% compatibility between HTML and Java. What's the difference? I'm running Chrome. I can run IE. I can run Firefox. Chrome seems to be the preferred way of doing it. That's the thing you want to watch out for. Microsoft Edge, not going to work. Save you that headache right now. Make sure you change your preference settings up on top so that modify goes to HTML. Some places set it back to Java each time or applets and don't realize it. So let's go to the left side. We'll open up our, our uh, folder structure from our universe. We're going to bring over year and quarter. Well, let me get the year over there first. And my quarter. And we'll bring over my state. And an HTML feature that's kind of unique. And these are things that I bring up in the training classes, all of them. What's unique about the HTML version is if I want the whole folder, you're used to dragging it, but I can merely double click on that folder. And by default, it assumes I want all the contents. Now, in my case, I'll drag the discount and in the in the, uh, in the margin out. I don't want those. Notice the little arrows to you, things that are unique to the uh, HTML version. And we're running in, in Chrome so as well, so some things there as well. But there's my set of results objects. I don't need query filters. Let's go to town. Let's show you what we can do, the amazing reports we can build in an hour. Keep in mind, Webby is a reporting tool. Tableau and Power BI are visualization tools. They don't offer the extensive reporting that Webby gives you. 
There's some overlap area as well. Future presentation I could do, and one new one we put together called Dashboards. It's a 150-page presentation on developing complex dashboard-like visualizations in Webby using a tool we're all comfortable with. So notice the new look in SP7. You don't have the blue with the white lettering on top of it. Everything's a lot of things are changing along the way, and that's what you're seeing here right now. Uh, let's take the state. I decided I want to take the state out of the report. I could do a break on the state. You know the analysis tab, which is a great uh, tab on top, probably the most popular. Future presentation you might want to see is analyze this. I do an entire presentation on all the different features that are up here that are available, some of the inside tricks and things with them as well. I could have taken the state and I could have gone up and applied a break up here, as you'll notice, okay? And it broke it by state, okay? But I don't want to do that. I don't want the break to break it and then leave that column within the block of the report itself. So we've always had a feature in Webby, even back to the desktop days, and I've been working with the product, what now, 24 years? And by the way, teaching live and virtual classes for the same time as well. In the day and age we're in right now, virtual classes uh, something you want to consider as well. I can grab the state column, merely pull it out, if I get a good hold of it, and I'm going to pull it up here, and I want to pull it out and make it a master cell. I want to section it out is the correct term. So I drop it into place, and it's like doing a break, but pulling it out of the report block. Now, that's pretty cool. If you notice as I scroll down, I have eight states in this underlying database, the infamous e fashion, so I have eight master detail blocks. Let's go down to the title on the bottom on the report tab. Let's double click on that one. And let's rename it Master Detail. We'll call it the Master Detail Report. Notice when I change the tab, the title changes. For the last three years, I've had the luxury of being able to interact with Samuel and Peter and some of the great developers in Paris, France, and pipeline into them requests from you, things that you would like to see, enhancements along the way. Actually, two of you out there, uh, Chuck and... Uh, uh, some of my other friends from the area, uh, Pat Hannum and some others are out there probably listening right now, had many ideas of what they wanted, things like that were incorporated in. This was one of them that came from the user community that they put in. So now when I change the tab, the title changes using something called report name, left parent, right parent. So I got my state broken out, but I want to have a second level one. So those of you that might have attended a report, this advanced reformatting in an earlier uh, webinar I might have done somewhere, this is an ex extended, expanded version with new stuff, as I like to call it. I'm going to grab the year, pull the year out, and put it right underneath the state, not on top. I don't want to replace, but right below. We'll see if I got it. Nope, there we go. So now I have my year down below, right below the state. And notice every time I pull one of my dimensions out of the report block, it now goes, it takes it down to a more detail level and aggregates it. So I've got my quarterly level report here that's generated based on a year and a state. But notice each every one of those quarterly reports contains the quarterly roll-up for that year for that state, all automatic. So now I've got eight times four, eight states, each with four years. So now I have 32 separate master detail blocks. New way of looking at it. This could have been a customer master with, with customer information in the master area. It could have been a patient up here with patient information and detailed information underneath. Endless possibilities. Think about that, what you could do. What I like to do with all of my master cells is I like to border them so I know how big they are. And it helps me in terms of uh, adding other functionality, other things into it. So we'll take the California one. Notice our five ribbons across the top. And we'll go to the border feature and we'll pick the border that's uh, media thickness around that one. Then we'll go down to the year one next right here. And we'll do the border for that one as well. And now I've got a master detail report and here it is. So, well, there's nothing too fancy, but look how nice it is. Uh, nice laid out a little bit. Let me move it over a little bit more, kind of spread it out a little bit. I want to take advantage of things as well. Well, notice the quarterly report has quarters one, two, three, four for each year and state, but I need total. So if I click on the sales revenue column and from my famous analysis tab where you spend most of your time, under the functions category is a sum. So we'll do a sum. As many of you experienced users know, I can't multi-select columns and do things like sum. Certain uh, features on the analysis will only work on one object at a time. So I had to do the sums the same way. So I drop that in there and you sit, look at that and say, well, that looks pretty cool. So far, so good. Now, as you look at it, you say, well, wouldn't it be nice if I could have these subtotals sitting above in the header section, in the master section, in addition to in the detail so I can see it above the report block as I come into the report? Well, I can do exactly that. All I got to do is go to the left side, grab the sales revenue first, 
if I choose to do it, drop it next to the 2017 for the year, make sure I get it right in place. And there it is. Now it's going to overflow as I expected it to do because it's a currency number. We know the defaults are much smaller now in the new version. Get this up a little bit this way here. And we'll stretch it out over on the right side here. I could have done an auto fit on it, but I like controlling it a little bit more this way. And then if I took the quantity sold, I could stick the quantity sold to the right of that right in here. And drop the quantity sold in place. Get it to drop it in. Well, sometimes you don't quite get a hold of it. I will tell you in, when you're running in uh, Chrome, it's a little more finicky about dragging and moving things around. So sometimes you have to be a little more patient just in Chrome. Sometimes I'll use the IE for some of that stuff and I'll go to Chrome for the core stuff that I'm doing to, uh, just to make it a little easier for me as well. But notice when I pulled it from the left side over to here at the master cell or at the section level, it gives me the 2.9. There it is. And by the way, let's extend this the bottom of this um, each master detail section so I get a little more room for readability. And the 17,000 was the total of that. Look what I did. I merely dragged it across and Webby took care of it from there. I'm going to move these back to the left a little bit, spread it out and move it a little more to the left. Now I could have done that by pulling them from down here, but then it would have removed those two columns from the report block and I would have placed them up here. So I'm smart about it. I grab them from the left. Well, if I can do that at the, at the section level for each, for a year, why can I not do it for state? And that's exactly what we're going to do. Take the sales revenue. We'll drag it across, we'll drop it in place right about there. A little bit of a guessing game, as you can see. I'll show you a little trick for lining in a minute. Let's move this up a little bit tighter here. And we'll extend it out a little bit more like this. And we'll take the quantity sold and drag that to the right of that. Drop it into place. And we'll move it around a little bit, kind of get a hold of it, line them all up. Got to kind of get them generally laid out, and you can do the formatting and so on. And as well, just let's stretch it out a little bit. Now, you do have some alignment capability. Let me see if I can move that one up a little bit there. And take this one up here and make it a little bit bigger as well so we can see it a little bit cleaner. I don't want to move it. I want to grab the lines on it. Got to get it just right for that, and there we go. Now, there's an align feature that is available. It's not the most powerful thing in the world, but it does a pretty adequate job. I can line them horizontally or vertically. So what you'd want to do is take multi-select all three, all right, three all three section areas from that one section for state. And if you right-click your mouse, you'll see a feature called a line. And under line, we, want, we don't want the first group because it'll center them on top of each other. We want them in the middle, kind of lined up even. I can do the same for the second one right here. And I can do this, and I can do this. And I can right-click a line there as well. And we'll pick the second group and line them in the middle and line them up that way. And you can align along the edges and all over the place as well. When you look at what we've already been able to do, this is pretty cool. We have a master detail report with 32 master detail blocks. Each state has one year underneath it, and there's four years for each state times eight, simple mathematics, 32. So, well, that's really cool. Look how easy it was to get the section totals by merely dragging the measure over to the right side. Away we go. I've had customers that have created a master detail report with just one master cell instead of two. And the typical version I used to do of this up until you're the first group now, where I've done it with multiple levels instead of just a single one. Uh, they, they like the, the ability to create a single one because you get a little bonus. And this is one of the many really cool features that you get with the Webby reporting tool. So many cool things, so many new things coming in. There's a map tab over on the left side here. See the navigation map? And by the way, if you're a relatively new or a light user, use the automatic help that pops up everywhere in Webby. No matter where you move your mouse, whether it's something that's generated by Webby or that you've created yourself, you're going to get some type of help message. Why people don't take advantage of that, I'll never understand. It's there to help us. Look at the map tab here. I click the map tab, and it gives me a map tab. And look what it gives me. This is really cool. And that's why many of my customers, as I said, We'll do this with just one master cell just to have the map tab. Now you say, well, what, what good is this? What's this going to do me? Well, I, I have eight state times four years, 32. So if I was looking for a particular state and year, it'd be pretty easy up here. I'd be using the scroll bar on the right and the page numbers on the bottom, but probably not too bad. But what if I had 50, state, 50 states, all 50 states, each with four years? Now there's 200 entries. And I said, find Michigan or find New York or find Texas. You're going to go nuts playing with the scroll bar on the right and the page numbers in the bottom, searching and searching, trying to find a particular value. 
Webby says, I got you covered. I'll make it easy for you. And this has been in the product forever, as long as I can remember. And uh, I started back in the old three, I guess two and three releases of the full client product. So it's been around forever. Look how this works. If I pick Florida over here on the left, it takes me right to Florida. If I pick 2020 for Florida, or if I pick Texas for 19, or DC for 17, or 18 for California, or just plain old California, puts me back at the top, as you see right there. Think what an awesome feature that is. The ability to create a report with multiple master details. What if you're a bank? You've got 400 branches and you're breaking out by state and then branch or maybe city and branch. This gives you a really quick and easy way to search through and find it. Now, if that isn't enough, if you decided to convert this over to PDF, and I'm not going to do that today, it's very straightforward. But if I were to convert this report block over, when I go over to the other end and open it up in PDF, this comes across as a bookmark. Now, is that an awesome feature? I can create PDF, nice, colorful, awesome PDF versions of my master detail reports that can't be changed, and I can automatically have a search criteria go on for the ride, and I don't have to convert it into Excel and do all kinds of things over there. Webby said, no, 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 no. Don't even worry about that. We'll take care of that for you as well. And lo and behold, here we go. Let's see if I can take the top, top half of this and move it down a little bit. I'm always careful when I move master details. Sometimes it can be finicky. You move more than you bargained for, so I try to be a little careful with it. Let me go up on top and shrink down the the page header at the top of each page. I don't need as much room for that one as well. So now we've got an interesting master detail report. Extrapolate that out to 50 states with four years, you'd be looking at 50 times four is 200 different master detail blocks. But look how it automatically organized the data for us. Well, we live in a world where we like to see graphics, we like to see charts, we like to see visualizations. Basically, a visualization is basically some type of chart or charts linked using dashboard. Webby does that, by the way. We can do a future presentation on that as well. What if I decided I've got a nice quarterly report at the detail level? What if I could stick a pie chart to the right that would represent that data in a chart format? What's well, a very common way to do things? And Webby has quite an extensive arsenal of charts. And by the way, I work with Tableau also, and there are some charting functionality, some really advanced ones in Webby that you do not find in Tableau. Tableau has some awesome charts, awesome geographics. So you have to look at both products, what you're trying to do. If I'm doing reporting, you're not going to do it in the, in the visualization products, but Webby will give you that ability as well. So let's take this existing block here, do a right-click copy, go over to the right side, do a right-click paste over to the right side here. Whoop, didn't get it quite right. And we pasted a duplicate copy of the chart of the quarterly report over on the right. Now, yeah, if I wanted to, I could have gone back to available objects. I could have dragged quarter sales revenue quantity sold. I could have multi-selected, dragged them in, and done it the same way. Six of one, half dozen the other. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the one on the right. We're going to use the turn into, the infamous turn into feature 4.2. And we're going to turn it into a pie chart. Now, these are rather interesting shortcuts. This says you want to convert it to a column, line, or pie. All of these have multiple variations of that type of this for charts. Which one are you going to get? I know from experience you don't. You probably would want to go to more transformations in your case and go down through the long list of the many different ones that are available. Here's a new geographic. If you're into gauges, if you're into funnel and pyramids, look at all the new ones that are out there. These are awesome. Here's pie. Okay. Oh, pie chart right in here. And maybe I want to pick this one over here on the right as my for my pie chart. Drop it into place. And we'll convert it over to a pie chart. Well, that's not the one I wanted. That's not the one I was looking for. I'm going to use the good old undo button. I'll just do a straight old turn into. I always do that one and it converts in a little different way than I want. So we'll do a right click turn into. We'll just pick it up right off of here because I know that one will default to the first one instead. And lo and behold. Takes a minute or two to come up. What's happened? They've got a brand new charting engine as a 4, 4 1 and 4 2. So we um, takes a little longer to come up. Sometimes it won't come up. If you ever get a big red X on your screen, uh, that means the one of the subservices. If I had more time, I'd show it to you, but most of you don't have admin access anyways. Typically, one of the services didn't come up, and that's all it is. So look what we got here. Look how cool this is. And I want you to notice something. I created one chart, but I have 32 of those. That was done in the details section. My master section with California, the state and year has the, the quarterly information underneath it, 32 of those. So I get 32 automatically generated pie charts, one for each state, year, 
combination. And Webby said, don't worry about it. I took care of it for you. You are good to go. Okay. And lo and behold, there it is. So, so now we've got this awesome looking report and, and a chart sitting with it up here in my master cells are my values. Okay. Wouldn't it be nice if I could take a look at the master cell values? Lotus California is 9.1, 1.7 million for, uh, as you look down the line, I'm looking at the state level anyways, 2.5. There are three states, California, Texas, and New York that are over 9 million, and all their other states are in the two to three million. So what I would like to do is say, well, let's take advantage of what I consider to be another awesome feature of the product, conditional formatting. Why don't we do this? For time's sake, why don't we look at the state level? Let's look at the sales revenue value. And if it's greater than 9 million, let's make all the backgrounds up here green, not the font color, the background. You can do both, all right? I don't recommend you set them both in the same color as many of my students are doing because you won't see anything but the color. So you gotta be careful to make sure if you do text and font together that you do separate the two out. So let's go to the analysis toolbar. Now on the back side of the display is conditional. And there's your conditional. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight, we're gonna do it for that cell. So we're gonna create a new rule. All right, so we'll create a rule. And we're gonna call that rule sales revenue, sales revenue, let me get it fairly close. Section, sales revenue section rule, because we're doing it at the section rule level. And it's called a rule. And if you've never worked on conditional formatting, the way it works is here's your description box and information, and you have six, up to six condition statements, define ranges or list of values, and you define your condition in here, and you hit the format and tell it what to do, whether it's a background or a font or inserting characters, it doesn't matter. So we're going to do the following. We're going to do, let's select an object, typical conditional formatting. Most everything I'm covering from the advanced level building is done in our intermediate course, assuming you had the basic for building a simple query. So what I want to do for mine is sales revenue greater than or equal to 9 million, nine, one, oh, there's my 9 million. Remembered from some previous stuff that I've ginned up. And we want to format that if it is greater than format. So now we have to remember how does Webby work? How does Webby work with conditional formatting? All right, you can change font colors, background colors, or both. By default, Webby is always worked this way. It assumes you're changing the font color, not the background. Unfortunately for me, most of the time I change the background colors because it stands out more. So I'm gonna have to go to the text box first and change the color to, to black or default. I'll just pick default, which is black. And then I go to the background color and I pick a color. And I'll pick a dark green color. My daughters went to Michigan State, so I have to pick a good green color for them. I went to that other school in Ann Arbor, so we'll have to deal with the colors, okay? And what that means is if sales revenue is greater than or equal to 9 million, I'm gonna see the text inside, the value with the green boxing around it. But I said, well, let's add a second one. And you can add up to six conditions. Now, another interesting point. What if you have more than six ranges? What happens? Webby said, don't worry about it. Create a second rule, call it sales revenue section rule number two. Pick up where you left off and I can turn both rules on or the same column at the same time, and it'll process them all. So you just gotta get them in the right order is all. So we'll do our second one, just to keep it simple, we're gonna do green and red only, select an object for my second condition statement. In this case, sales revenue less than, and my nine million, well, nine, one, two, three, one, two, three, for that one. And for that format, I need to make the text color black again, or default. Let's do the default, and we'll change its background color to a red color, which will be this one right here. If I had more time in a typical classroom environment, what I would do in training, you actually build this monster that we're that, we're, that I'm doing here right now as part of the training with some other neat bells and whistles. Um, you'd be able to do a red, yellow, green combination as well. So I have two condition statements. Notice the subalert or pop-up message. That's a little bugaboo from the old version. When we used to call them alerters and subalerters, they just haven't cleaned up the help messages yet. It's always fun to mess with the Paris developers on those. We'll do an okay here. Let's watch what happens. Actually, nothing happened, which is exactly what I expected because I didn't have anything highlighted when I did it. Did it on purpose. We're used to highlighting a particular column and then creating the rule. In an instant, I say, okay, it comes up. Well, I just left it off to start. Now we'll go into here. We'll go under formatting rules. We'll select it to turn it on. 
And now anybody that has a value greater than nine million, which you see there are, is green, everybody else is red, but only at the state level. I didn't do anything at the year level, I could have, but I didn't. This is an extended, new extended version of what we're doing. So I just haven't worked a different color combination, but we could have done a similar set of ranges at the year level within each state as well. One of the things you learn about rules is you can share those rules, which makes it really, really cool. So if I go all the way up to the top, I can highlight this cell here, and I can say under formatting rules, let's select it to turn it on, and selecting again will turn it off. And I can do the same for state. And I can go into formatting rules in here and select that one again to turn that one back on. Oh, I think I had the wrong one highlighted. Yep, I want this one to do the formatting. We'll turn it on there. And we'll go over to, to the state level here and make sure I've got it highlighted before I do that so it picks it up there as well. So we'll go select that one, puts that one in there as well. Okay. So now look at how we've been able to expand this out. Quite an amazing uh, report that we're building here in the master cell. Again, thinking of it from a different perspective, could be customer, patient, things like that. The detail section underneath it just opens up all kinds of possibilities for you as well. And I'm not limited, by the way, if I wanted to, I could go into here and I could apply conditional formatting in these individual rows here as well. Okay, So that gives us even more interesting ways to look at it to make things stand out. When you look at the ability to create master detail, sectioned reports is what Webby calls them, right out of the old Oracle days. That's where you can see where Webby's or roots are in the or from Oracle years ago. When the founders started business objects, there were five of them from Oracle. And so we see here, here are a lot of terms and things that remind us of the Oracle world as well as part of that. But the conditional formatting could have applied across the board here as well. And I could have done a second level for the years, obviously different set of ranges because these are a little bit smaller. I did my original one based on the section total for at the state level, but I could have done one for the year level as part of that as well. So we know how we can align those going across. We know how we can go back into here and we could do conditional formatting in there if we wanted to. And if there was multiple levels in here, I could do breaks on it and so on as well. Everything on the analysis toolbar can be incorporated in here. The one thing you gotta watch out for is on the display side, if you wanna group the states and have the states maybe grouped into regions and have the region up here instead, it won't let you do it here. You could have done it on the original vertical table, created it and converted the state column into group using the group function, and then brought the group in instead and would have had it for each region instead. Now keep in mind the master cells here, I can still go up and I can create a local filter. I could do a ranking. I could do a sort, all right? Maybe I wanna take my years here and I wanna sort those in descending order so my most current year is at the beginning of the master section block as opposed to at the end. So now when it converts it here in a second, so now I go 20, 19, 18, 17. You can't do a formal break up here because it's an implied break. Think about what you're doing. It's an implied break. You pulled it out instead of leaving it in. If any of you use reset dimension concept from calculations, formulas and variables, this would constitute a reset break level as well. Even though it's master, master detail sectioning, the master section is like an implied break, so it would be your reset object you would use there as well. So those of you that work with calculations, you know exactly what I'm talking about for that. But let's do a couple other nice little things. Uh, number one, here's, here's this ought to be interesting. What if I wanted to put some type of a banner in here? What if I wanted to do this? Let me create a new variable. And we're gonna call it banner. call it manner, and I'm gonna leave the formula blank for right now. Uh, we'll just set it equal to, uh, I'll just do a double quote, double quote, just something. So it's equal to something to get it to go in there, put it out there, and we'll do an okay on it. So what I wanna do now is I wanna have a little, I wanna have a little uh, marquee across the top that goes from right to left, and it states something like to hit, use, hit the tab button on the left side to be able to navigate, some type of help messages. I want to extend a thank you out to Pat Hannum and uh, Chuck out there from Oakland County. They're the ones that dreamed up some of these interesting concepts. And as working with them, we learn these little tricks from them. And like I do with all of my uh, training that I do, I share things with others. Came up with this concept. So what I've got is I got another document out here. It's already built. And what I want to do here is go out to their banner. And I'm going to copy the actual code out here. Let me copy it all the way over. Thank you, Pat and Chuck, for your uh, coming up with this concept here. Notice I have multiple report tabs. There's a pre pre preference setting to, to allow you to do this so each 
each document you work on comes up as a separate tab and I can copy and paste back and forth. We'll take the banner. This is the banner on the um, on my other side here. We'll take all that out. Make sure I backspace those. I'll just highlight them and we'll do a paste here. It's a text and we'll call that one uh, banner. Doing okay. Hopefully I've got it correct. It's hard to do it on the fly, but we'll see what will happen with it here. So I'm going to drag the banner right out into the report here. And again, thank you, Pat and Chuck, for this one. This is really cool. Uh, let me check here. Hopefully I'll get it to run this time. I'm going to delete the title out of it. Now, the one other thing I've got to do, well, I've got to expand it, but I'll show you this little trick. This is the recent one, I, another one that I just added in. Sometimes I'll put two or three of these in my latest demo version of this. If we were doing a class, if you come to any of my training classes, you'll uh, you'll be learning how to do this neat little trick. Oh, I'll just extend it from the right side, whichever way I can get it to go. Uh, there's a couple settings that have to be done at the CMC level, which I didn't show you here, but would have to be done to support this, this uh, HTML feature. And I have to go to Format Cell, and I have to select for the display read contents as HTML. This is cool. And there you go. Pat, I know you're out there, and Chuck, or you were out there. Thank you again for your coming up with this, and they've done some develop, some amazing development. There's a conference I go to every year called IBIS. It's out in June, and it's out in Carlsbad, California, put on by Infosol. And they have some amazing, it's an amazing conference to go to for three and a half days. I've never been anything like it in all my years. I present every year and they have a whole section on uh, dashboarding techniques and tricks and things. And, and it's nice to see Pat and Chuck uh, attended the sessions as they always do and look for things like this. This is really creative. Look how cool that is. And I could have flipped it to go left to right. I could have stuck another one over here, which I've done before. But if you look at the calculation, let's look at it real quick. And here it is. Equals double quote HTML, there's your marquee, then it's direction equals left or right. It could have done and so on along the way. Nothing real difficult. Just had to make sure a couple internet settings. There's a couple settings you have to do through the CMC, a setting and, and, and put the uh, that feature in. And it works like a champ. Look how cool that is. It says click on the map tab to search. There's my map tab. So envision yourself putting putting these in other places along the way. This is really cool stuff. And again, let me stress the simplicity of this. So many times when I train, and there are many out there right now listening in that I've trained, whether it's people from U.S. courts or the state of California or the state of New Jersey or state of Michigan, many other places, um, it's the simplicity factor I try to deliver to you. Don't make it overcomplicated. Build it in little pieces. Add in pieces at a time and try it out, you know, move it around. So let's go. Let's add some more in. We're not done. Okay, here we go. And again, you get this really neat example in our intermediate course. It's really cool. I want to move the chart over here a little bit because I'm going to add a little more to it. Get it over to here. So what if I decided I needed to do a little bit more? I want more graphics. I want to maybe really make it stand out. What if I decided where I've got the green background up here, okay, um, for that, or the red, what I'd like to do is I'd like to have a corresponding stoplight, a real fancy stoplight on the right side, a big one, that shows red, yellow, green. We're just going to do red and green based on what the section total is at the state level, okay? That's what I want to be able to do. So how am I gonna do that? How am I gonna do that, okay? Well, we're gonna go up to the for, uh, report elements tab to grab a cell and we're gonna stick a blank cell out there and we're gonna stick it right in here. There it is. And then we're gonna take that cell and we're going to extend it out. Make it bigger because I want a big one. So those of you that do email me, post the class. I'll pop it up later on. One of the handouts you'll get would be this. You'll get it anyways. Accelerate will be sending an email how you can get it from a link. But I can additionally send you the stoplights that we've actually downloaded and downsized, made them smaller. All right, I'll show you how you build it, and then I'll give you a couple of warnings about it. Now, I've got a blank cell now that I want to work with. And here's an interesting, another one of those little... Um, you and I would call them bugs or bugaboos, and they call them undocumented features at SAP, but whatever you want to call it. I'm going to go up to conditional, and I'm going to hit new rule, and it doesn't do anything. I've got a blank cell, and it just doesn't like that. So let me click in the white area so nothing's highlighted. Create the new rule here. 
And now what we're going to do is we're going to call this the stoplight rule. It's kind of interesting. I have a lot of customers that get into building co complex uh, conditional formatting like I'm doing. They'll create eight or nine or ten different rules, and they'll call them rule one through rule ten. Not smart. If it's a stoplight rule or if it's a sales revenue master section, put that in the title. So there's my stoplight. It's going to be a stoplight rule. And what I want to do is this. We're going to have condition, select an object. The first one will be sales revenue greater than or equal to 9 million. And what I want to do is hit the format button. And now we don't really care about display or text. All we care about is the background. What do I want the background to be? A stoplight. Well, I have a little folder out there that's got red, yellow, and green stoplights, full size and mini. And I'm going to do image from a file down here. And I'm going to do an add. And I'm going to choose that file. And I've got to go out and find the one. I've got one out there uh, called stoplight. Oh, here it is. They're already there. So this one I want green light. There's a green light and a green light small. What we did is we created two sizes of it. The small one, so if you're doing it within a block of a table like you see down here where my mouse is, and I wanted to do it next to quantity sold, it would fit. The one I have now is a regular one. It would be way too big. So if you get these from me later on, you'll be able to get the red, yellow, green in two sizes, regular and small, depending upon how you're using it. All right. So we'll pick the green light, regular. Okay, we'll do an upload. Now, a little warning, those files have to be small. We originally had those stoplights as JPEG files. They were too big. You have more limited memory when you're doing conditional formatting with the stoplights. We converted them over to PNG files. I never have a problem uploading all three or all six because of that. And I would give you that version as well if we were doing it, okay? I also want to go to borders and turn the borders off on that one because I'm just going to have the stoplight. Okay, so doing okay for that. So there's my first condition that says in that blank cell, if the sales revenue is greater than or equal to 9 million, I'm going to see a green stoplight. But I need one for red, the opposite way. We'll go to add again, hit the add button. The second one on the bottom, make sure you never have cell contents in here or it will work sporadic. It will never work 100%. And you go crazy trying to figure out what it's doing. The second one, sales revenue less than, in this case, 9 million. 9, 1, 2, 3, and a 1, 2, 3. We'll do an okay on that one. Whoop, I didn't do that one right. What did I forget? I forgot to define the stoplight for it. We'll go back to manage rules, and we'll take the stoplight run. I got, I jumped the gun a little bit. We'll hit the edit button on that one. And for the second one on the bottom, and again, you'll have up to six. So it becomes a scroll window. So you don't have a size limit like you did prior to 4.2 with earlier versions or even 4.1. You have the scroll bar. Okay, I'll add up to six different conditions in here. And you can create a second rule that can be shared on the same column as a first rule as well. Let's go to format again. Let's go to background. Image from a file. And this is less than, so we want this to be the red stoplight. We'll choose a file. And we'll pick the red light, regular, not small and we'll upload it. Now normally that's where it will hang. If you, you're bringing in two or three objects like I'm doing it and have a different object for each rule, that each condition statement within that rule, when you get to the upload and it hangs, your images are too big. So they've got to do some expansion on that. I've been long conversations with Samuel and Gregory in, in the Paris group and little things like that to make those a little easier for us to work with. So there we go, there's less than 9 million, so let's, let's do this, okay, we'll do an okay. So I haven't turned it on yet. Remember, because it was a blank cell, blank cells, it will not let you create the rule. So I just selected nothing, selected the white tab area. So nothing was actually selected as far as any of the objects, including the blank cell. Then I'm going to turn it on now by highlighting it. I'm going to be going in here and I'm going to turn on the stoplight rule by doing that. And lo and behold, look what we get. Whoop. You know what I did? I think I uploaded the, uh, uh, the wrong value for that one. But you get the gist of what it's doing in there. For the total so uh so we get our red or we've seen our green whatever the case may be for those as well so again the concept of the stoplight really really cool feature as well the other thing you could do is we could insert a little uh, icon up here a thumbs up or thumbs down i won't do that but we could if we wanted to as part of that uh, extension as well one other thing now that i've got this report geared off of state one of the features that you want to keep in mind that becomes very important when you're developing reports and charts and starting to get into the dashboarding concept of Webby 
and in a later presentation I can do for all of you, I can show you exactly what I mean with that, uh, with that as well. But um, uh, let's do the following for this. Let's see, what do I want to do? Is input controls. Never used an input control, they're gadgets. They're called input controls in Tableau. They work similar, both products. I select input control window. I want to create one for state. I got some really cool examples we do. And we'll pick a list box here and we'll make the number of lines not five, but eight. And here's your typical input control gadget. I'm not going to spend any time on that. That's just part of the regular input control generation that you can do. I'm going to apply it to the current report tab. Uh, under master detail, so it applies it all the way down the line. And let's do it all the way. Well, it's got it actually up here for it, so do the whole thing that way. We'll finish it up. And on the left side here will be an input control gadget that comes up, assuming it created it for me. And here's your classic input control. So I could use the standard multi-select. I'll use the control key to select maybe four of those eight that are out there. I can hit the OK button on it. And now all my master detail reports are sectioned just down to those particular four. I combine that with the report tab on the left side for search criteria, and I get the best of both worlds. So there's my tab for navigation. There's my input control gadget that drives all that. I have an example I do, it's a very popular one I do, uh, and do it in-house for customers as a bonus for training classes, is where we create four or five different ones, and we have these all interdocument linked. I have one related to another, and we'll link one that jumps to a different report tab and so on. True, actually true uh, dashboard, where you're selecting and, and dropping around and, and uh, dropping in and out of different charts at different levels based on what you select at a higher level as well. But you can see, all of the in, in, in interesting functionality. To get a good look, view of this under the covers, over on the right under Design button, if you go to Design with Structure only, you get a structural view. But you can see all of the component pieces that make it up. That's an awesome thing to keep in mind. I always laugh when I do that because there was a time when I called it stuck mode. In the early version of 4.1, when you would go there, you couldn't get out. There was an undocumented feature for that as well. But here you go. All right. So it's amazing what we're able to build in about 40 minutes, 45 minutes, with a lot of interesting uh, details with charts and our stoplights and master details and conditional formatting, endless possibilities. Simple, but yet powerful in terms of what we're doing to master detail. You know. Let's go back a level. Let me add another report tab. I want to show you one other thing you need to watch out for. When you're creating master detail reports, it can be confusing to people. Go up here. So let's bring over a year state, sales revenue quantity sold. We'll just bring all four across, your standard multi-select for it. Then we'll make it a little simpler version of a master detail with just one master cell instead, okay? You have different ways to pull the, the cell out. I can grab it here and I can pull it up and drop it into place like we did, all right? That was one way it could be done, all right? And there's another way that some of you are already familiar with and I don't like this technique. Here's an ins if you right click on your mouse and you follow it in here, uh, here's a set of section that will do it for you. But the problem is it places it where it wants to on the left edge, and you lose the ability to really be able to be flexible with it. It just doesn't make it easy for you as well for that. All right. And I always tell you, if you're going to create a master detail report, put all of the columns that you want or all the objects technically, because it might be a cross table or whatever, in the block itself, okay, and then pull them out like I just did. Because here's the alternative. Let me take this out. And this is, a again, this is a, um, a Chrome issue. When you drag and drop with Chrome, you have to usually pull it up and over. You can't just pull it to the left. And IE you can just drag it right straight across without any trouble at all. By the way, that little marquee feature I just showed you, we could not get it to work in IE, but it works great in Chrome. So one of the reasons I have it there as well for that. So now here's the situation. And some of you may have been long-term users. In the old days, what we used to do here is said, well, here's year sales revenue quantity sold. I want state to be the master. Oh, I can just drag it from the top into version three and earlier you could, but watch what does here. Actually didn't do anything. It should drag it out. Let me get a hold of it. Here's my little Chrome technique for dropping it in. So basically, normally it'll drop it in. Oh, there's an interesting little behavioral issue with that one. I'm used to just pulling it out and dropping it into the report itself, and it didn't. Let's try it one more time. See if it'll drop it in. It didn't, but normally it'll drop it in as a separate column. It's, I'm going to have to look at that as a Chrome issue here uh, with SP7, which we recently updated to as well. 
So it makes it difficult. So how do you do that? Well, under report elements, report amounts is a dangerous tab to use. It assumes that everything you're picking up here is coming in new and you have to fill in the blanks. All right, so let me select new document here. So in this particular case, what I would do is I would go to section, I would say insert, it's that old piece of gum stuck to your shoe syndrome. It says, where do you want to drop this section? I said, well, let's drop it right there. What do you want it to be? State, and it drops it into place. I find it much easier to build my report block and then pull out the master cells and drop them into place one at a time myself, control where they are, and pull them up that way. And if you drag from the title, I warn people in all of our training classes, stay out of the titles except for formatting. This is one that will get you. I pulled it from the data, not from the title area. There it'll pull the title itself out and it will not create a master detail report. So little things like that, you really need to be conscious of as you go through, just to be safe, all right? Just little things like that can be, uh, can be frustrating as part of that as well, all right? So gave you an awful lot to look at. I'll, I'll, again, I'll have a handout that I'll make available to all of you for, the, for that with the content. There's my contact information. Um, you can email me if you want a copy of the handout and you want the stoplights. If you want the stoplight gadgets, let me know. I can get the, pull the file over for you as well. I've got, actually got a thumbs up, thumbs down I can throw in there as well. But let me jump around here real quick. Uh, celebrate people here. Thanks for attending. I'm going to put their slide up and I got one or two more that I'll put up. Uh, for the business objects training, I train for them, like I train for other companies and uh, directly as well, but they offer a wide variety of, of uh, training classes and a variety of products. And both of our companies uh, are doing a lot of virtual right now with all that's going on as well for, their, for that part. Now, let me pop this up real quick. Topics, if you'd like to see a new one, we're talking about doing another one of these in about three weeks, be another like, just like another free training class. Topics could be analysis tab, new and improved. We'll constantly enhance and revise that one. Uh, the presentations you see here are all ones that I'm doing at the IBIS conference in late June. Uh, managing your merging, there's the hot one everybody seems to want. You might want that one as well. All the ins and outs of bringing in multiple queries, bringing in personal data files like Excel and merging them together, freehand SQL. How do I adjust if I have a mismatch on the formats of some of the dimensions I'm merging on? How do I bring in an Excel file and how do I update an Excel file? I get more questions on that than anything else. Building simple visualizations, what's new in 4.2, uh, just some of the others, but we would like your feedback if you do send an email in or when you respond back to the uh, email from Accelerate, let us know what you would like to see in about three weeks out. You know, a lot of you are working at home right now, so you have a little more flexibility. If we can squeeze an extra one or two in, we'd like to do that and give you more content, give you a lot of great insight. The, the content you'll get is typical of our uh, training content as well, but you can see what we have right here uh, as potential topics as well that you might want to see as well for that. And what else did I have? I had um, course offerings that I have. I can't figure out why that little block showing up on. Oh, there we go. I have a new Web Intelligence Applications Day where I, we have about 30 best practice guides we give out in all of our training classes. We let you pick five or six and we spread them out over the course of a day and it's another whole day of training but specific to building, uh, managing your merging and all the different uh, handouts that we have for that as well that are available as part of that. So something to keep in mind. So let me pop back up to the, uh, oh, there's the IBIS conference. I don't think we need to look at that one. Uh, we'll pop back up to the thank you for attending. So I do appreciate you all. Sorry for the mix up in the beginning, but we weathered the storm. I know, uh, I don't know why if it had a different session opened up because I had the correct one in there, but we weathered the storm and we have extra time built in for it anyways to be able to help out for that. So uh, let's see, no questions out there. If you have any questions you'd like to do, probably the best way to do it would be for you just to send me um, in an email, drop me an email with it and I can um, respond back to your questions typically. For those that do send an email, usually you'll end up getting um, uh, uh, some other handouts, there might be something you ask about, I, I throw one in, I think might be relevant to what you're doing for that particular piece of it as well. Thanks again to Accelerate. Thank you all for coming out. It's a crazy world we're in right now, but you came out and attended it, and I really appreciate that. And hopefully I gave you some really good examples of things uh, and the simplicity. So I will let you go with that, and I appreciate it. I look forward to your feedback at a later point. So thank you all very much.
it's going to unmute everybody, but uh, where's my attendees list? So if anybody wanted to ask a question or two that we could, let's try that. Hopefully yeah. that will unmute it. So, so anybody have any questions? Make sure you respond back to Accelerate. You'll get the link how to download. You can also email me and I will send it to you that way as well. Check out the Accelerate training schedule. They offer a lot of different training classes. They're a great organization to work with. So, Thank you for your time. Thank you all. Thank you, Mike. Oh, can you please share the formula for the banner through email? I'll make sure I include that for you. How's that? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks, Mike. I do have a quick question. Sure, fire away. Is this, is this by any chance um, recorded? For some reason, like a couple minutes in, I got booted out and I missed like the first 10 minutes of this. It should be all recorded automatically because it showed me that it was recording it and I haven't stopped it. So you should be able to, to get the download. You should get an email back from uh, Celebrate. They'll give you the instructions. Okay, that's great. That's what I needed to know. Thank you. And if you don't, for some reason, contact me. We could set up a little mini session we could do, and I'll make sure you get it one way or the other. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Anybody else have any questions out there? Feel free. Nope, but you can hear that the kids are not in school. Thank you.